Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Oh, Max going to leave us now that he joined us for the very first part to say hi. Hope you guys are having a great Monday so far. Hope you had a happy Easter. It was beautiful weather here. It was around 80 degrees yesterday. So things are really warming up. Hope you're enjoying the beautiful springtime. And if you're still in cold and snow, hang in there. Hopefully it's just around the corner. Welcome to the live stream today, you guys. Today we're gonna to talk about how to grow lots of zucchini in a, uh, a small amount of space and how to prevent and control powdery mildew. So that's a big problem for a lot of gardeners, myself included. So thanks for joining me today. And I wanna hear all of your tips as well for growing a lot of zucchini. Um, zucchini is a can be a huge plant, or it is a huge plant, can really be a space hog. So I'm going to give you some tips today on how to keep it healthier, how to grow more, and how to grow it in a small space. So don't worry about it. If you've got a balcony or a patio that you're growing on, you can still grow zucchini. And I'm kind of referring to all different types of summer squash today, but zucchini being the most popular one, we're going to mainly talk about that. Um, so we're going to get into that in just a moment. I want to say hello to those of you that are here. Thanks so much for joining me. For those that got here about 15 minutes early, we're usually hanging out. Our moderators are here about a half an hour early. Um, Cliff is usually here, one of our moderators, but he had a conflict today with work. So Nisha's here moderating and hopefully camera guy will be able to join us in the chat as well. So welcome to Connie Graham. Hello, so glad that Connie that you're enjoying greens. Veronese, hello. And yeah, Max wandering around looking for uh, lizards now in the uh, uh, nasturtium air oh, oh no actually he's snapping at bumblebees which the I gotta show you guys the um the fountain planter area is absolutely blooming beautifully with nasturtiums and there's tons of bees over there and Mac for some reason likes to snap at the bees and we always try to warn him that he's going to get stung but he just doesn't listen to us <laughs> okay uh, Marie how are you great to have you here um, Veronese, glad it's good timing for zucchini. We're all getting ready to plant, hopefully, most of our warm weather vegetables. Uh, Ashley, hello. All of my seeds are growing. I have tons of little seedlings. So exciting, Ashley. I'm so happy to hear that. Tony, welcome. Um, glad that you're here. Debbie D, hello. P. Treadway from Hot Arizona. Big Mama's Garden, hello. Angela's Garden Sense, always great to catch a live stream. People here from all over the place. Kush Patel, how are you today? Um, yeah, the, uh, our our dog Mac is cute. He's such a mild-mannered dog. We're very lucky to have him because he doesn't really dig or anything like that. So I don't know how we got so lucky, um, but we're definitely uh, keeping that guy around. Rita, how are you from San Diego? My backyard gourds. How's it going? He, she says, rough, rough, Mac. Yvonne, great to be here. And okay, guys, let's jump into it. Are you guys ready to grow some zucchini? I love zucchini. I don't know about you, but we have it on the grill. Um, what I like to do at the beginning of the week, or on the weekends, I usually harvest a whole bunch of stuff um, when I've got the warm weather vegetables in the garden. And then usually Mondays or even over the weekend, we'll barbecue and grill up a whole bunch of vegetables. And then we'll just eat them all week long. And zucchini is definitely a fun one to have in there. But I like to grow different types of colored or uh, of summer squash, including yellow crookneck, white scalloped, green scalloped. Um, yellow scalloped, all kinds of stuff. And zucchini is a warm weather vegetable. So if um, you're past your last frost date, um, you can go ahead and get it planted. It does like to be planted in warm soil. Um, so you might even want to wait a couple of weeks past your last frost date. But here I've got um, a little seedling that was started on February 14th. So this is maybe about six weeks old. Definitely definitely ready to plant. Just planted my very first ones in this Smart Pots over the weekend. I think this is a 15 gallon Smart Pots. So you can definitely um, plant them from transplants. You can plant seeds directly in your garden beds or containers, but definitely wait till it's warm. It loves temperatures between say 70 and 90 during the day. And then it's been in, still a bit in the 40s at night and these are doing just fine right here behind me. So um, let's talk about the first tip to grow zucchini and to grow it in a smaller amount of space, in less space. And that is you want to grow up not out okay so traditionally uh, most people plant zucchini in a garden bed and they just 
uh, stick seeds or a transplant in the ground, and it can literally take up about three or four square feet of space. It's a humongous plant. So one thing that you do want to do is grow it up. Um, I've been trying this for a couple of years with great success, and by that I mean you want to grow it in a tomato cage, which is to me the easiest way to grow it, or stake it. And then um, if you stake it, you want to tie the plant to the stake as it grows. What zucchini does is it grows from one main stem and um, it will grow if you if you uh, train it properly it will grow up so all the leaves don't sprawl out everywhere so what i like to do is as my plant grows now this is still a very small plant so i haven't had to do this yet but as my plant grows i'm going to actually show you on this little guy here um it's actually starting to develop little blossoms so as my plant grows i will trim off all of the leaves on the bottom stem of the plant so out from here is going to come a ton of great big huge leaves so below the first set of blossoms or below the first zucchini when you actually get zucchini on it you don't need any of those leaves so we're going to actually talk about that in just a moment but you can train this little plant to grow up a tomato cage and that way um, it's up off the ground you're going to be saving yourself from um, getting all kinds of diseases on the ground. You can actually see the zucchini when they grow a lot better. If it's up off the ground, you're gonna allow more light to the plant. Zucchini likes a ton of sunlight. So by growing it up and not out, you're providing the plant with more sunlight. You're exposing the flowers more, which will bring in the pollinators and that will pollinate your flowers and then help you to grow a lot more zucchini in a smaller space. So one of the problems people do have with zucchini is is a lack of pollination um, and a lot of times people will hand pollinate which also is a great way to grow more zucchini but if you're growing your plant up a tomato cage it's exposing um, the flowers more so the pollinators can find them <coughs> excuse me in that way you're gonna be uh, getting more zucchini to pollinate and be able to harvest a whole lot more so that's the first tip for today is to grow them up not out excuse me just a moment that way you can grow a plant, a zucchini plant, in about one square foot rather than three or four um, square feet. So definitely if you're growing on a patio or balcony, go ahead and get them planted in a container. I would recommend at least a 10 gallon to 15 gallon container for a zucchini plant. Um, this is the Smart Pots fabric containers. It's a 15 gallon. And these new colors are so pretty and they're now available over at smartpots.com. So head over there and grab one. But the advantage to growing in a fabric container too is that you're gonna be able to grow more roots in your zucchini plant, which is also gonna help you grow more zucchini as well because the roots aren't gonna circle around and get root bound. So first tip is grow your zucchini plants up and not out. So I wanna go into the chat here, answer your questions, hear your tips about growing zucchini. And let me know if you've had um, luck with growing your plants vertically. The other um, little tip that um, it's going to help, the other benefit that growing them up is, is it's not going to be all over the ground. So it's going to keep them away from the pests and the critters, which we all know um, like to come and chew on your plants. So it won't give them quite as much access to your plants. Okay, let's see, let's see here. Um, Jennifer's saying they need more space, even the container variety. Um, yeah, I would definitely plant them in a good sized container. Um, you could probably get away with planting like a scallop squash in a smaller container, like a five gallon. That tends to be a little bit more of a smaller um, variety, but I definitely wouldn't put a zucchini or a, um, like a summer squash or a yellow uh, crookneck in a uh, five gallon container. It's just really a little bit too small for it. Okay, question here. Um, how do I deal with, hi Randy, how are you? How do I deal with ants on zucchini plants? Okay, Randy, I did a video, I think it was probably last summer on some uh, DIY ant traps combining borax and sugar. So go back on my YouTube channel and look up DIY ant traps and it really does help take care of them. And it's using very common uh, household ingredients. Hi Brittany, how are you? Question is, um, any magic tips to get those female flowers to come on? Okay, those are sometimes very elusive, Brittany. Uh, I totally hear you. I actually had a big problem with that last summer. I was getting tons of male flowers and almost zero female flowers. And as far as I know, 
anyone has any suggestions, I'm very open to them. There's really no magic way to get the female flowers to come on. Typically, the male flowers show up first, and then the female flowers will follow a few weeks later, but they're not always very prolific. So hang in there, hopefully you'll get female flowers, but as far as I know, there's uh, not a way to encourage more female flowers. So didn't have a big zucchini crop last year because for some reason they just didn't want to, to uh, bloom. Okay, let's see here. Proactive zucchini bug control. We're gonna get to that in just a moment, BW. So hang in there for that. And let's see here, Marie, how do you correct a zucchini plant that vines out of the cage? Do you just prop it back up? I'm always scared about breaking the stem. Marie, I'll tell you what, that is actually gonna lead right into our next tip for growing more zucchini and a smaller amount of space. So first off, we have grow up, not out. Second off, we have prune your zucchini plants. Okay, very, very important, and it's very, very helpful for um, not only more zucchini production, but also for um, when you grow your plants up. So what you do as your stem grows, I'm gonna grab my little seedling here. I kind of mentioned this a little, a little bit ago. Zucchini plants, um, when you're growing zucchini, the fruit only need the energy that's coming from the leaves above them. So you can prune any of the leaves that are below the flowers, the first set of flowers, or the first zucchini. So every, anything on the lower um, stem of the plant, you wanna prune off as it grows. And that will help your main stem. Um, it'll, it'll be a nice thick main stem. It'll help it to um, continue to grow up and not be pulled down by the weight of all those leaves underneath it. So the plant doesn't need all these leaves. A lot of times those are the first leaves to get um, pests, to get diseases. And if you prune them off, it's gonna send all the energy into more zucchini production which will not only help you grow more in less space, but will help you grow more zucchini. So definitely you wanna keep those lower um, leaves pruned. Now, big tip with these, if you've, I wish I had a big zucchini plant I could show you, but I don't have any grown big enough yet. If you've ever pruned off zucchini stems, you know that they're hollow, okay? And those hollow stems can really harbor diseases and pests. So what you wanna do is prune those stems off as close to the main, or prune those, yeah, those uh, branching off stems um, right at the main stem. So if you prune them close to the main stem, it doesn't become, it's not hollow anymore, it becomes solid right at the main stem. So don't leave little, you know, branches sticking out because I have a little hollow end. So prune them all the way to the main stem and that way it's solid and you're gonna have much less um, chance of harboring pests and diseases in those little hollow, hollow stems. So prune them close to the stem, prune off everything on the lower, um, below the main set of flowers and below the first zucchini. And that will really help lighten up your plant and give you more zucchini to grow. So hopefully that'll help you guys. Um, don't be afraid to prune all those off. Usually those are just the old, or they are just the old leaves and they're really not doing your plant any good. So send all the energy into those upper leaves and you'll grow a lot more zucchini. Okay, let me make sure that we have everything on here that I wanted to mention. Um, Nisha's popping, if she has a chance, popping a couple of links in there about another, a couple other videos I did on how to grow lots of zucchini. And if you need seeds, you guys, I do have a squash seed collection completely dedicated to squash here. So um, if you guys have never grabbed my seed collections, I like to put everything together for you so it takes all the guesswork out of it. If you're brand new to growing, it really helps because you don't have to wonder what seed should I grow. Um, if you wanna grow squash, there's five varieties in here. We do have the Black Beauty Zucchini. Um, I have a winter squash, a spaghetti squash and butternut squash, two types of winter squash. And winter squash, just so you guys know, doesn't mean that you grow it in the winter. It means that it has a, um, you actually grow it all summer and then you harvest it right as the seasons change from summer to winter. It has a harder um, rind to it, so it will actually preserve a lot longer over the winter time. And then um, the summer squash varieties have a more tender outer skin, the uh, crook neck, the zucchini and then I have a scallop squash in there as well. They have a tender outer skin and they're meant to be harvested in the summertime and then eaten right away. They don't preserve for several months like the winter squash do. 
So grab this over at calikimgardenandhome.com. And today is the last day of the sale. If you watched our video over the weekend, you know that I'm running a sale with the code GARDEN. And it applies to, um, it's 15% off, applies to all my seed collections smart pots containers and my book so go over there and grab it today's the very last day and by the way you guys um these uh cali kim five gallon smart pots in the bright colors with the handles are going to be available probably within the next week or so so definitely stay tuned for that i'm very excited about that brand new product that you guys um requested it's going to come in this orange color and then behind me here, you'll see the violet and the berry blue. So it will come in all three colors and it should be available hopefully within the next week um, if all goes as planned. Okay, so let me hear your zucchini, your, your, all of your zucchini tips here in the chat, your zucchini questions. Grow up, not out, and then make sure you plant, uh, prune your zucchini and you're sure to get a lot of harvest. Okay, let's see here. Um, I've, I am seeing some questions about the squash vine borer. We actually do not have them here in California. We're very lucky about that. Um, but yeah, I agree with what um, Jennifer is saying. Um, yeah, you do want to, uh, you can go, go in and remove them actually from the vines uh, themselves or from the stems themselves by cutting off the stem and then going in there and actually taking the vine borers out. So that can be a really big problem for a lot of people. Um, and that's probably one of the biggest reasons. I think it's uh, east of the Mississippi people have vine borers and west of the Mississippi they don't or something like that. I believe it's something like that. Um, so that can really be a huge problem. Okay, grow it in zone four from Alaska. Hey, how are you? It's great to have you on here today. Um, and here's a question from Simply Hodge. Can you plant different varieties of squash in the same planter bed? You absolutely can. There is no reason um, why you can't combine different types. Um, I've got some zucchini and I think over here I've got some scallop squash, which you can actually grow on a tomato cage as well, but I just haven't um, put one in yet. And um, you can grow like butternut squash, like for example, the planter in front of me here. I got some squash in yesterday. I will be planting probably some butternut squash on the cattle panel trellis as well. Um, but yeah, there's no reason why you can't plan, um, plant different varieties in the same garden bed. Okay, um, a question from Erica. Hi, Erica, how's it going? Does growing vertically only work for vine type summer squash zucchini or can bush types also be grown vertically? Yes, they absolutely can. In fact, zucchini is actually a bush variety. It's one thing I didn't mention. It's, it's um, not considered a vining variety, but because it does kind of develop that long stem as it grows, um, you can definitely stake or put that in a tomato cage and just train your plants up in through that tomato cage as it grows. If you're growing it on a stake, you definitely do need a sturdy stake. It's not my preference. I just think it grows a whole lot easier in a uh, tomato cage because you don't have to, you know, tie it to your stake or anything like that. You just kind of direct the leaves as it grows and then the tomato cage supports it as it grows. So um, yeah, you can grow bush varieties vertically as well. Just get a little bit creative, guys. If you have any other ideas on how you could grow zucchini or anything else vertically, pop it in the chat here. We can certainly all learn from each other. Even some of the DIY cages I talked about on the weekend video, such as this one right here behind me is made out of concrete remesh, which is a circle type of cage. You could definitely modify that. You might wanna make it just a little bit smaller to grow a zucchini plant. This one I think is about a two foot diameter cage. Um, so get creative and you know look around and see what you have around your uh, garden or your storage shed or whatever and you know make it cheap and inexpensive. So hopefully you guys were able to catch that video over the weekend. Um, some DIY tomato trellis ideas. If not, head back and watch that. And um, we are just gonna have so much fun growing a lot of tomatoes. I was able to get, I think, five or six tomato plants planted over the weekend, including some eggplant. Um, so hopefully a lot of you all are planting outside as well. Oh, and I did wanna mention, guys, um, before I forget is that mark your calendars because coming up on Wednesday, April 14th, we have a very special live stream plan to celebrate National uh, Gardening Day. So that's a Wednesday. 
Um, we're gonna go at 5 p.m. this time, a little switch from our normal noon Pacific time, shake things up a little bit. Wanted to give Camera Guy a chance to be involved in the live stream. And we're gonna be doing a uh, several really great giveaways on that live stream, as well as have a special guest. So mark your calendar, Wednesday, April 15th, National Gardening Day. It's actually gonna be a wrap up of the Spring Garden series. And then make sure that you stay tuned to this weekend video because we're gonna be announcing the giveaway. And believe me guys, you are not gonna to wanna to miss it. There are gonna be some fabulous giveaway prizes. So watch this weekend's video and then mark on your calendars Wednesday, April 14th, come back to the live stream to find out if um, you're a winner. Okay, let's see here. Max, hello, joining from London. Wonderful, so glad that you're here. Um, glad that you took the time out of your day to join us. And let's see here, any more questions? Is that 5 p.m. Pacific time? Yes, it is, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Okay, Angela Christmas has a question. Where do I find the plant fabric that blocks too much sun for my plants? Okay, that would be shade cloth, Angeline. And uh, I'll have to check and see if I have a link in, the, in this video description once it uploads to YouTube. But um, you can find it on Amazon. A lot of garden centers have it, but I found it's a lot cheaper on Amazon. So, um, Definitely uh, go back and, and search my YouTube channel on um, growing vegetables in the heat or look up like heat wave or something like that. In most of those videos, I talk about shade cloth and I'm sure that I have a shade cloth listed there. There's tons of different um, options out there for you. Okay, Jocelyn has a question. When is it too late to start seeds? Jocelyn, it is never too late to start seeds. I start seeds year round and most people can start seeds at any point um, during the year. Um, now, it depends on what type of seeds you're starting. So there's warm weather vegetables, there's cool weather vegetables, and there's different kind of guidelines for how each type grows best. So Jocelyn, you're gonna wanna grab my book because I explain it all in my book. And this is gonna be a resource that you do not want to be without. So you can grab a signed copy over on my website. Um, cool weather vegetables grow best in temperatures of 75 degrees and under, and warm weather vegetables grow best in temperatures of 75 degrees and over. So you kind of want to gauge accordingly um, as to your climate, as to what vegetables you're starting when. But we have lots of resources. Um, watch our spring garden series for a lot more information on that. Um, here in California and in southern climates, it's a great time to get your warm weather vegetables planted outside. But if you haven't started seeds yet, definitely um, now is the time to start and grab the spring garden seed collection for a basic seed collection um, to grow your spring garden. It has 13 varieties in here. It'll really give you the resources that you need to get going. So yeah, Jocelyn, I'm really glad that you're starting and there's nothing like growing your own food. Even if you live in a, in a climate where it's cold year round, you can still grow very simple crops indoors like lettuce, basil, microgreens. There is really no time that you have to be without growing vegetables either indoors or out. Okay, Agord, how are you? Uh, rats keep digging up my raised beds. Do you have any tips to prevent this? Oh my gosh, what a pain. Um, I don't know that I've ever had rats digging. Usually if there's digging going on in my garden, it's the squirrels, the chipmunks, maybe groundhogs. Usually rats are eating my vegetables. Um, but one thing I've been using lately that's been super helpful for a lot of animals around the garden is Repels All. Um, and that is a product that you can use as a concentrated spray or it comes in granules. So I definitely recommend um, grabbing some of that. There's a link in this video description. It is approved for organic gardening. It's pet and uh, people safe. Um, so you don't have to worry about your pet um, getting into it and being harmed. It's non-toxic. It has like a garlic and a um, uh, clove scent, I believe, clove oils that really help repel those pests. So give that a try. Okay, we're gonna jump into our tip number three to help you uh, grow more zucchini in less space and to help prevent powdery mildew. And this is really where that powdery mildew comes in. Um, really the key is to, this is tip number three, is to prevent and control powdery mildew. So if you guys have ever grown cucumbers, squash, and things like that, you know that powdery mildew is like the bane of every gardener's existence. Um, Jennifer, the product is called Repels All. So check the video description for a link, okay guys? Um, you know, and you know what, by the way, I get lots of questions, lots of emails on where do I get this and such 
such product that I mentioned in my videos, always check the video description of any video because I want to. I want you guys to have the resources that you need to be successful in the garden. I try all the products that I mentioned to make sure they work. And so always check the video description if you need any pro uh, product assistance. And there is Mac right behind us again. Okay, so you want to definitely pr uh, prevent and control powdery mildew. The biggest thing you can do is prevent it before it even happens. So if you've never had powdery mildew, first of all, you are lucky. But if you are wondering what it is, if you see little white spots on the leaves of your plants, um, that's the start of powdery mildew. It, it usually looks like someone sh uh, shook a uh, baby powder over your plants. It will grow and spread very rapidly. It's a fungal disease. Once you get it on your plants, you guys, it's very, very hard to get rid of. So um, what happens is it just sucks the nutrients out of the plants, out of the leaves. So the leaves eventually yellow and then get kind of crispy and die. And it can spread very rapidly to other plants in your garden. So it's very typical on squash, on cucumbers, on peas. Um, it can't even affect tomatoes, so you really want to keep an eye on it. So typically in the past, I've used a milk water spray to help prevent it. Had pretty good results with that. And that's uh, a uh, spray that you make with um, nine parts water and one part milk. And you can go back and watch my video on that um, to, uh, to see just exactly how to do that. But this year I'm using a new product that I'm really excited about that I've actually heard has worked for many years. It's a copper fungicide. This is an organic product as well. And I see people there talking about copper fungicide already. So yeah, this is um, something that you want to spray on your plants. Um, as soon as they are planted. And I plan on spraying this on my zucchini. Haven't done it yet because I just planted them yesterday. I wanna give them a couple of days to kind of settle in. Uh, you wanna spray it in the morning when the sun's not out and the pollinators aren't as active. So um, you don't wanna spray it directly on the flowers, but you definitely wanna spray it and do a test spray first. So I'm gonna spray a couple of leaves of this plant here. Wait a couple of days just to make sure there's no damage and then I'll spray down the entire plant. So um, this works um, absolutely beautifully. Like I said, I've heard about it for years and this will be my fir first year trying it. This is another Bonide product. They have some amazing organic products and go over and check out their website at bonide.com. They actually have something called a problem solver. I think it's under, I forget which tab it's under, but look around on their website. What you can do is, um, kind of select which problem you're having in the garden, whether it be bugs, whether it be powdery mildew, whether it be some other type of diseases. And then they have a problem solver where it tells you a little bit about that problem and then what product will work the best for it. So their website is very well organized. And I would highly recommend picking up some of this copper fungicide because once powdery mildew gets a hold of your garden, it is very, very hard to get rid of. Um, so yeah, definitely want to control the powdery mildew to grow a lot more zucchini. So I want to hear from you guys here in the chat here um, what you've had that's been successful against powdery mildew. And it does tend to thrive in more humid environments. Um, so if you live in an area with high humidity, you're definitely going to be facing it. But even here in California, although it's a dry environment, we usually always get it towards the end of the season. So it's almost kind of a... Um, it's almost kind of inevitable, but the longer you can hold it off and prevent it, the more zucchini you're going to be able to grow. Now, that being said, when you're growing it vertically and you're pruning all the bottom uh, stems and leaves off, you have a leg up because you're providing more airflow, which is going to help the leaves dry off if they get wet. It's going to help prevent um, water from splashing up on the leaves because your leaves will be up higher. So all the tips we're talking about today all will help prevent powdery mildew, including um, prevention with uh, the copper fungicide. So back to the chat here, guys. Let's hear what things have worked for you with preventing powdery mildew. Okay, let's see here. Planted seeds, I say, from cantaloupe. I hope that's okay to plant near zucchini from Cindy. Um, sure, Cindy, go, go ahead and go for it. Really no issues as far as that goes. Plant them and go for it. Okay, Jennifer, you want to treat the plant and sparingly. It does put more copper into the soil. Okay, you definitely do want to follow the directions on the label and not treat any more than what the label says. So definitely follow the instructions on the label. It does 
Um, the active ingredient is a copper soap. Um, so yeah, just follow the directions on the label and you should be good to go. And Bonite has very detailed um, directions on there. Okay, Brittany, um, yeah, follow the directions on the label. Let's see, um, Kenzie, how are you? My greenhouse had such bad mildew last year, such good tips. Okay, yeah, it definitely can spread quickly in a greenhouse because that can tend to be more of a closed environment with higher humidity levels. So definitely wanna give your greenhouse some venting and some airflow um, and maybe put some fans around too to help you know with airflow as well. And hopefully that'll help you control it there. Okay, Big Mama's Garden, how are you? If I put netting over my plants to protect them from birds and, and pests eating them, will the pollinators and bees still be able to do their jobs? Okay, Big Mama's, what I would do is put those covers on um, when they, uh, as soon as you plant them to help protect them from like the cabbage loopers and that type of thing. And then once your plants start to flower, I would go ahead and remove them um, and let the pollinators in. Uh, and that way the pollinators can pollinate and help do their jobs. And then you might wanna cover them back up again once you start to see the fruits develop to help protect them from the birds. So um, yeah, just keep an eye on it. And if you see that you're having problems with pollination, you may wanna go in there and hand pollinate as well. And that is another thing that can help you with more zucchini, although that's not part of my tips today, but that definitely can help, is hand pollinate too if you're having issues with your uh, zucchini getting pollinated. Okay, and oh, another little tip here, guys, um, is you can plant um, your zucchini or your squash from transplants and then at the same time, pop some seeds in. So that's a little method called succession planting so that you have different zucchinis and different squash ready to harvest at different times. So usually zucchini is a huge power producer and you're gonna have so much you're gonna be sharing with your neighbors, but maybe you wanna plant a different variety. Um, maybe, you know, just to give yourself insurance in case one zucchini plant gets attacked and doesn't make it, um, you want to give yourself a couple of plants going in the garden at the same time. I always like to plant backups just in case. And um, yes, thank you so much, A. Gord, for that great tip. Make sure your plants are as healthy as possible in the first place. Will help prevent powdery mildew. Use good soil and fertilizer. Absolutely. Can't go wrong with that. Okay, let's see here. Um, definitely, Jennifer, thank you so much for all your tips. You definitely do want to use um, all this, all these methods we're talking about as a preventative measure. If you get the copper fungicide on your leaves soon enough at the very first sign of powdery mildew, often it can help control it. But once your plant is infested with powdery mildew, this is not gonna help. So prevention is so, so important. So take the time. Um, I know you might not, not wanna spray, spray something on your plants when they look absolutely fine, but take the time to um, prevent powdery mildew and that way it does not, you have the best chance anyway of it not getting out of hand. Okay, let's see if we have any other questions. Let me just check my notes here to see if I forgot to cover any of our tips today. Want to make sure that you guys have all the tips that you possibly need to, I think. Oh, one thing I, I'm not sure if I mentioned is you wanna make sure that you plant your zucchini in full sun. And that's one reason why staking it really helps is because it allows more light to get through. When all those plants are sprawled over the ground, there's lots of shade under there, which is gonna help um, more, uh, uh, give more chance of diseases coming in and taking over. And also it hides your zucchinis underneath all those leaves that are hiding in the shade. So once you get them up here on a stake or a trellis or a tomato cage, you're gonna see the zucchini plants before they get out of hand. If you guys have grown zucchini before, you know that they can quickly grow to baseball bat size within a couple of days. So growing them up, not out, will give you more visual on them so that you can harvest more and have more edible zucchini to make all that yummy stuff out of. Okay, let's see here. Any other questions? Uh, how often do you spray for powdery mildew? Cindy, make sure that you follow the directions on the label of whatever product you're using, the copper fungicide, and you don't want to use it more than is recommended. Okay, um, Vianney Crete said, last year all those spider mites ate all of my tomatoes. Oh my gosh, I had that same problem. 
I didn't notice them until it was too late. They were all over everything and the plants didn't recover. We'll try again this year. Okay, I am so glad, first of all, that you were gonna try again, you're not giving up. It can be really discourage, discouraging when those spider mites or the aphids or whatever take over your plants. Um, so definitely try again. One thing that I've been using this year, another Bonide product is the, um, uh, the Captain Jack's dead bug spray is working great for the cabbage loopers. The Mite X is working miracles for the aphids and these are all organic products. Um, and I haven't had a chance to use Mite X yet on spider mites because I haven't had any yet this year, but you definitely want to go and check out that product because the label says it is very effective against spider mites as well. And since that was one of my big problems, you can better believe it that my tomatoes are going to be getting a spray down with spider mites as well. Okay, Mr. J Pizza, what do you do for feeding? Okay, I pretty much feed all of my plants the same way. And if you've watched any of my YouTube videos, you know that I feed everything with Vermisteria whack. Great, okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so yeah, go back and watch. In fact, we did it on the video we just posted over the weekend. I'll show you exactly how I feed tomatoes. You wanna go back and check out the Spring Garden series and you'll see all how I like to feed all of my plants. Okay, Chanel, very common. And Chanel saying, my zucchini plants go limp in full sun. That's just kind of a response, uh, kind of a um, stress management tool that zucchini plants and cucumbers, by the way, do that, is they go limp in full sun. So don't worry about it. It doesn't necessarily mean that your plants need water. Um, usually they'll perk right back up again um, as soon as you know the sun goes down a little bit during the day so don't water them unless you know, until you check your plants and see that they need water so it's just kind of a response to um, the hot hotter weather okay let's see if there's any other questions okay Randy great question about zucchini flowers why do my female flowers keep turning yellow and fall off before even opening Okay, a lot of times, Randy, that is just due to a lack of pollination. It could be due to hotter weather, depending on the temperatures in your area. I guess you're saying they fall off before they even open. Um, I would keep an eye on those flowers because many times they are only open for one day. So um, you wanna catch them and hopefully try and hand pollinate them before they fall off. So um, you wanna go back and watch, search my YouTube channel for hand pollination and some videos will pop up that tell you exactly how to do that because that's a great way to grow more zucchini as well. Okay, question here from Chanel. How many zucchini are in the pot behind you? Is that a 20 gallon smart pot? This I believe is a 15 gallon and there are actually, I think two or three I can't see at the moment. Um, and I'm gonna be keeping an eye on this. And I, I usually like to plant a couple in one pot just in case one plant doesn't make it. And then as they grow, I will be keeping an eye on it and then trimming out the, the weakest plant. So we'll see which one is the strongest and then keep the strongest one going in there. That way they don't have to compete for nutrients. Okay, hi Melissa, glad that you caught a live today too. It's wonderful. And let me scroll down and see if we have any other questions here before we sign off for the day. And if you are going to be pruning or uh, trimming, thinning your zucchini plants, I saw a couple of questions here. You can either kind of uh, very carefully get down in there with a shovel and pull one out, although that's not always successful because typically zucchini don't like to have their roots disturbed too much. So it could work, could not work. What I would do um, is take a pair of scissors and trim off the stem of the weakest plant at the base. I know it's hard to do guys, um, but that way you're not disturbing the roots of the plants around it and all the energy can go into um, one plant there in the container. So you can always plant more seeds if you want to grow more zucchini somewhere else because they, once the weather heats up and it's nice and sunny and warm, uh, 75, 85, up to about 90-ish degrees, they do very, very well and you're going to be able to grow uh, more plants very quickly. Okay, let's see here. Let me scroll through, see if we have any other questions before we sign off for the day. Um, Rod, how are you? Great to have you here today. All right, and your question is, Rod, if my zucchini plant has powdery mildew, are those zucchinis still good to eat? 
absolutely. It does not affect the, um, the flavor. It does not affect the taste. It can eventually kill the plant, but you can still harvest and eat the zucchini that are growing. And by the way, guys, this copper fungicide I was mentioning, you can use this up until the day that you harvest. You're just spraying the leaves. So um, it doesn't affect the, um, the zucchini or uh, your ability to harvest the zucchini at all. Okay, I just saw that we had a super chat here, guys, from Magical Garden. How are you? Great to see you on here, Megan. Uh, have a great day, Kim. Thanks so much for all the awesome information. Thank you so much, Megan. Thank you for all your support. And if you guys did not watch the weekend video on um, uh, the tomato trellises, we featured Megan's garden on there and she has an awesome garden in Ohio. And uh, she showed us her indoor grow light setup. She showed us how she's um, combating fungus gnats with the sticky traps. And she showed us her lovely patio with all kinds of beautiful colored smart pots. So go over and watch the weekend video. Make sure that you catch her little portion in there. And she also has a YouTube channel. So Megan, if you could let us know the name of your YouTube channel. I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of it. If it's Magical Garden. Um, if you could please let us know that so people can go over and check out your YouTube channel as well. That would be awesome. <laughs> My stream just, uh, just quit on me there. Um, so Megan, thank you so much for taking the time to film that video for us. And hope you guys have enjoyed all the viewer videos. It's been so much fun to hear from viewers all over the world. We've had Rods here. He, was, he showed us his garden from Mexico. We had viewers um, all over the US. We had a viewer in uh, Germany last week. So it's been a ton of fun. Okay, and Magical Garden saying it's Magical Garden here and on Instagram. So go over and check her, check her out guys. Show her some love and thanks again for sharing with us, Megan. It was really, really fun. Okay, well, I'm gonna take one more question today before we close out for the live stream. This is a fun, fun group here today. And we do live stream every Monday at noon Pacific time. And do make sure you mark that special Wednesday, April 14th, 5 p.m. Pacific time live stream, live stream on your calendars to commemorate the National Day of Gardening. And here we have JH, first time listening to you live. This month marks one year anniversary for me being a gardener. Thank you so much for the inspiration, Kim from Jade. That's awesome, Jade. So glad that you're here. You're definitely in the right place to learn lots of great gardening tips and tricks and inspiration. That's what we try and offer here. So really appreciate you joining us. So guys, hope you had a great Monday. Um, it was a great Monday live stream with lots of great tips on growing more zucchini in a smaller amount of space and controlling powdery mildew. Have a great week. Make sure you join us on the weekend video. We'll be announcing a fabulous giveaway. And please do take advantage of the 15% off sale today with the code GARDEN at CaliKimGardeningHome.com. All right, you guys, have a great week. We will see you on the weekend video. Bye-bye.